Hi, welcome to Unplugged with Araldo. We're so glad to have you with us. We have a wonderful show lined up for you. We have national celebrity fitness trainer Jillian Michaels here to talk about her new book. Woohoo! And we're going to delve into the fascinating world of tattoos, as well as chat with actor and former athlete Sanjay Raja about healthy lifestyle tips for children. So let's get started. Joining me is renowned life coach, leading fitness expert, and eight-time New York Times best-selling author, Jillian Michaels, to talk about her new book, The Six Keys, Unlock Your Genetic Potential for Ageless Strength, Health, and Beauty. Oh, I am so thrilled to have you on the show. <laughs> hey, Raldo, thank you so much for having me. All right, let's get to the first question. Uh, explain why genetics does not have to dictate how we age. Well, your genetics are static, not dynamic. And what that means in a very simple way of saying it is that the way we live our lives, not just diet, not just exercise, lifestyle, the way we keep our environment and so on and so forth, has a direct impact on how our genetics express themselves. So for example, I'm predisposed to cancer. I lost three grandparents to it, predisposed to heart disease. It's on my dad's side of the family. I was overweight as a kid and my father was overweight. And yet at 44, I am the picture of health, according to my doctor, and I feel pretty darn good. So clearly, right, genetics are not a foregone conclusion. So then what is it that's telling our genes how to express themselves? And that's what the six keys is about. All right, my next question. Tell us about the six key body processes and how we can make them work for us. Right, okay. So as we've mentioned, right, there's nothing in our genes that tells us to age or die, so why are we? There are six body processes that are responsible for exactly that. And when they get out of whack, you've got things like gray hair, wrinkles, a metabolism that's failing you, that big gut midsection, and even far more nefarious, Alzheimer's, heart disease, type 2 diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, and the list goes on. So things like stress and how we adapt to it, inflammation and how we manage that body process, your epigenome, which dictates the expression of your DNA, the length of your telomeres, right, and on and on. The reality is that we need a unified, holistic, balanced approach, a lifestyle that encompasses not just common sense food and common sense fitness, but also an appreciation for the mind-body connection, our emotional stress, our physical stress, getting our sleep, mitigating UV rays, cleaning toxins out of our air, getting rid of toxic relationships in our lives. All of it needs to be taken into account. And so the way forward isn't like I'm following this diet, I'm keto, I'm paleo. Like, not only is that totally counterintuitive to longevity, which is all in the book, but you simply must look at this and approach it with a 360 perspective. Provide us with some ways on how the average person can put these techniques to work. Of course. Let's take one of the, what I call the pathways, right? Let's look at your environment and how that could be killing you. Well, if you're breathing 11,000 liters of air a day, and your air quality is poor in ways you may not even imagine. For example, you may have toxic chemicals in your carpet or in your cleaning products, or there might be chemicals in your air vents. Change the filters on your air conditioning and your heating on a regular basis. Get an air purifier for $40 and put it in your house because indoor air quality is worse than outdoor air quality. Get a couple of house plants to help you clean the air. Open windows. Use natural oils on your body, like coconut oil to moisturize instead of expensive moisturizers with a ton of toxins in them because what you put on your body goes into your body. And that's just a few simple examples from the lifestyle and environment section of the book. Things that you wouldn't even be thinking about that can help you fight off disease and boost immunity and look and feel better for decades to come. And lastly, what do you think is the single most important factor that predicts how a person will age? There is, there just isn't. Unfortunately, I can tell you that when we look at our telomeres, right, that's protecting your chromosomes and your DNA. When your telomeres get shortened over time, you're at risk for genetic abnormalities. You've got chromosomes fusing with other chromosomes that they shouldn't be, and so on and so forth. So we gotta keep these telomeres long, right? 
Well, we know certain types of exercise is going to do that. We know certain nutrients like alpha lipoic acid, which you can find in tomatoes, for example, or beta carotene, which you would find in cantaloupe and carrots, or polyunsaturated monounsaturated oils help to preserve telomeres. We know depression shaves our telomeres at an accelerated pace. So again, there, there isn't one. I'm gonna give you all the information in the book. I'm gonna tell you exactly what to do, but we have to understand that it could be anything from your mood to your food to your fitness regimen and so on and so forth. And we've got to take steps on all fronts. All right. Thanks, Jillian. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, guys. Still to come. I think we all seen tattoos and thought, wow, that is a work of art. After the break, we'll take a closer look at the tattoo culture from band to beloved, how the tattoo industry is more popular than ever. Stick around. Welcome back. Joining us via Skype from Denver is the founder and editor-in-chief of Inspired Magazine, Candice Liu. It's great to have you on the show. How are you? Good. Thank you for having me. Oh, no problem. How's the weather out there in Denver? <laughs> it, it's sunshiny, a little chilly, but A little chilly? Good. Okay. Yeah. So let's, let's start for the first question. Tell me a little bit about what inspired you to start Inspired Magazine. Um, I started it six months after I graduated college. Um, I had a passion for social media and journalism, and I wanted to put basically all my skills to the test, and I want to be my own boss. I wanted to explore the tattoo culture world, and, you know, here we are, you know, two million fans later. <laughs> <laughs> and how did you come up with the name? Was it just you came up with the name or somebody else came up with the name? or? I did. That was my name um, that I came up with. I, I love... Um, being inspired, I feel like, you know, that's what propels the world forward in many ways, um, starting from fundamentals to, you know, art and whatever, whatever drives us forward. So, um, you know, being inspired is the greatest feeling in the world for me. And so, you know, ink inspired, you know, it just came about. <laughs> mm, yeah. So the, the, the tattoo industry, let, let's take this generally speaking, in the past five or 10 years, that's really has grown. Tell me your, your experience or feedback that you've seen with, with the industry so far. You know, it's just everywhere. It's become so mainstream. Um, it's become a part of our daily lives in every aspect, um, all walks of life. I've seen doctors, lawyers, you know, um, you name it, musicians, athletes, um, people. You need to have money now to get tattoos. Um, because they're not, they're not cheap. They're kind of expensive, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, how much, well then, it's great. A question would be, how much, how much was as a tattoo, I guess, cost? I, I have no idea. So just give us like a general idea of what, what a, 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 a single tattoo would, would be cost. It ranges. Um, you know, everyone's prices are different. Some charged by the project, some charged by um, hourly. Mm -hmm. But I have some friends that charge four or five, six hundred dollars per hour easily and they they're booked for months wow so so yeah. tell us who who has been on the cover of your magazine anybody we recognize or know about or um we've, we've covered several musicians athletes celebrities um i've interviewed chester bennington of lincoln park um mm -hmm. he was probably my biggest interview to date mm -hmm. um you know he passed away yes he passed we, away yes Yes. Um, and then, you know, athletes, Super Bowl champions, um, you know, we really try to cover the scope of culture. Tell me, tell me why people are fascinated with tattoos in your mind. Uh, it, you know, it's just a, such a celebrated form of expression, I feel like. You know, um, it allows us to be individuals. It allows us to share a piece of, of us with the world that we can't really hide, you know. Um, and it's, it's very celebrated, and I, I appreciate that. Hmm. Do you um, tell us a little bit about your, your fan base? Uh, uh, you have a lot of followers, I understand. So tell us a little bit about the fan base, a little bit. As I mentioned before, um, I wanted to put my social media skills to the test. Uh, I started a social media business out, right, right outside of college, um, and I, I needed no limits to, to create a brand, right? Um, so throughout the years, I've built a Facebook following of more than 1.8 million for the magazine. Um, 
and then a hundred over 150,000 for, for Instagram for us. And, you know, we did that with no budget, no, um, you know, I, I did it myself. So, right. <laughs> so we have a thriving community of over 2 million. Wow. That's a lot. Listen, Candice, we're out of time. Thank you so much for being on the show. All the best to you at Inspire Magazine. I'm looking forward to seeing you soon. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. You're welcome. Take care. Thanks. Okay, guys, still ahead, we have the author of The Food Talk joining us with some simple rules parents can follow to get their children on the path to making healthier food choices that can last a lifetime. Welcome back. I am joined by national speaker, actor, former athlete, author, and the founder of Teen No Excuses Fitness, Sanjay Raja. Listen, this is a lot of titles, man, <laughs> but all worth it. Thanks for being on the show, Thank you man. so much for having me. Oh, no problem. Listen, I before we get into the, the book that we have yeah. over here, uh, tell me a little about your story. Who is Sanjay Raja? Uh, it started... As a little boy in India, mm -hmm. immigrated to the United States, okay. um, and as as we moved over to the United States, you know, education was key. Right. So I tried being an engineer because mm -hmm. when you're Indian, you can only be a doctor engineer. Oh, those are the only right. two options. Those right? are the only two options. <laughs> okay. And I decided I didn't want to do that. Uh -huh. uh, I got into med school. Decided the night before I was supposed to go, I'm not going to go. It just, the night before you were yeah, supposed to go. Yeah. Yeah. I called the guidance counselor and I said, "It's just not for me. I'm not doing it for the right reasons." I'm sure your parents took it well. <laughs> they, they took it really well. Um, and then I you know, bounced around in IT and medical field. And uh -huh. then what I realized was I need to do something that makes me happy. Of course. You know, and that's the hardest thing in life is to find what makes you happy, mm -hmm. not to do it for a paycheck. Okay. You know, and I realized that I want to help people on a really deep level. Mm -hmm. And my kids inspired me to write a book. Right. So I started a fitness company, which started to gain a lot of traction. Mm -hmm. And I also said, I want to start acting because I've always wanted to do it. Right. And did, you, did you get any formal training? Or? Zero training. And my first audition, I was laughed out of the room. Completely laughed out of the room. Oh, and then took I took it well, I'm sure. Right? I took it really well. <laughs> and I realized I need to get some training. So right. what I did was I studied hard, took night classes in acting. Mm -hmm. And I got my big break. And I became a recurring character in season four of House of Cards. Wow. So, Which yeah. is read by a lot of people, guys, by the way. Yeah. Yes. So it was an awesome experience. I worked with Kevin, Robin, uh -huh. and they were in both my episodes. She was directing me. So it was a great experience. Right. That led to more commercials. That led to some more TV shows. Mm -hmm. And then we've got a film coming out Which in is a TV show you have based on your book, right? Yeah. So, so I was reached out by producers in LA who got a copy of the book. Okay. And they said, we'd love to create a reality TV show about what you do. And one of the biggest things I do is just work with families mm -hmm. on how to educate their kids on how to eat properly. Right, which is, which is something that you didn't have when you were growing up, right? No, not at all, because we didn't have the, we, we had the internet just right when I was going right. to college, but right. it really wasn't developed. So in the book, I tell people, I said, it's not our parents' faults right. for teaching us the way they, they did. They didn't have the information. The old mentality, I used to say. Exactly. <laughs> and we have all the information, uh -huh. so there's no excuse now. Right. So we've got to be accountable. And we leave it to our parents, our mm -hmm. doctors, our teachers to teach our kids. It's actually right. our job. And I did it by example because when my kids were born, I was terrified. <laughs> I was terrified. I'm sure you were. And I said, you know what? I have to step up to the plate. So that's what the book is about. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the book is talking about overcoming your fear about making mistakes because you're going to make mistakes along of the way. Of course, yeah. Trying and testing what works, what doesn't work. Uh -huh. And then writing some clear-cut rules that I've practiced that I've shown to my clients at work that are simple, actionable, and anybody can do it. So I, I know people are going to be like, wow, I can't believe you did that. But you are an, actually, you are an MMA fighter, right? I did that for about five years. Yeah, wow. yeah I went completely off the reservation. Listen, man, <laughs> respect there, because oh, that's, a, that's a lot of on your plate. How, how did you become an MMA fighter? I was in uh, Taekwondo for about 15 years. Okay. And I... I compete in a lot of tournaments, mm -hmm. and I started martial arts because I used to get beat up a lot. <laughs> yeah, I used to get so beat up. Funny. That's the simple answer of it. Right. Not feeding, yeah. I'm getting into martial arts, right? <laughs> exactly. And then, you know, I just love competition. Uh -huh. I love competing against other people. And then really, with mixed martial arts, it's a chess game. Right. You're competing against yourself. It's not True. the opponent. True. And so I just really got into it, and I had a decent record, and then... 
I retired because once you turn 26, 27, you're an old man in That's sport. true, that's true. Right? That's right. So tell me about your company and, and your, the services that you yeah. provide, which is Absolutely. fascinating. Absolutely, yeah, way. so I own this company called Team No Excuses Fitness. Okay. And we are a nationwide company, mm -hmm. and the services we provide is online nutrition coaching. Okay. So a big part of what we do is understanding why it is you eat, the certain foods you eat, right. why you give it to your kids, and getting behind the why. I'm all about the why, which all is about the why, right? why are you doing this, why are you doing this, always question everything. And what you do is we break it down to simple terms and saying, hey, listen, we're not about diets. Diets right. are not sustainable. True. We are true lifestyle change. That's and right. lifestyle changes, guess what happens? You can carry that with you, mm -hmm. number one. Two, you can pass it on to your kids. That's true. Because the biggest premise in the book is everything we do, mm -hmm. our kids watch. All right. Right? We're like mentors to them, right? We're mentors, and you lead by example. So what I want to do is leave a legacy of where parents could say, I put them on the right path, mm -hmm. they chose that path, and guess right. what? They're teaching their kids. That's true. That's, That's right. what I want to do. So what are, I know the, besides the book and the TV show, you have a movie coming out or something. Please, please let us yeah. know about that. So uh, I was blessed to be casted for a movie called The Favorite. Mm -hmm. uh, it's with John Schneider, Dukes wow. of Hazzard. Yes, Dukes of Hazzard. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And we've got some great up-and-coming actors in there as well. It's about a young man who gets into a car accident and loses the ability to walk, talk, and just function. And I get to play this, the role of a doctor. Shocking. Shocking. <laughs> I'm shocked. <laughs> and I'm the surgeon who operates on him. And I am basically telling the parents to lower their expectations for his quality of life. And it's coming out when? It's coming out June of 2019. Sanjay, my God. God bless. All the best to you. Please come Absolutely. by again. Love to Thank have you, you so on. Much. All right, Sanjay. Thanks. <laughs> Okay, guys, don't go anywhere. Coming up, we have an amazing woman who has made it her mission to raise awareness for the rights of persons with disabilities. When we return, we'll talk about the stigmas and inclusion gaps with Global Google Ambassador Deborah Rue. We are back. Joining me via Skype from Virginia is Deborah Rue. Deborah was just recently honored at number 15 of Global Top 100 Digital Influencers. Deborah is a disability inclusion strategist and the CEO of Rue Global Communications. Deborah, I admire your passion and I am grateful that you are on our show. How are you? I'm doing great and so honored to be here. So thank you so much for inviting me. Oh no, thank you. And you're in Virginia right now, correct? Yes, yes, how, lovely how, Virginia. How's the weather there, okay? <laughs> we, we, ha we have something we're not used to, which is the sun is shining. The in sun Virginia, is shining, so. which is a rarity, right? <laughs> yes, so we're thrilled. All right, all right, let's get into my first question. You are a brand ambassador. You're an influencer with people with disabilities. Talk to me a little bit about that. Well, I am blessed to have two grown children, and my oldest is um, a daughter, and her name is Sarah, and she was born with Down syndrome. Okay. And when she was born 31 years ago, um, the uh, four months, it took them four months to figure out that she had Down syndrome. And when they did, it was such a tragic, sad message. And I thought, well, wait a minute. Um, she's still the same person I thought she was, you know, before you told me this, why is her life a tragedy? And so I was working in the banking industry and I thought, I just felt very led to uh, move more into this industry to really understand that we're all human beings, we all add value, and just because we're born with disabilities or we acquire disabilities, which many to most of us are going to in our lifetimes, it doesn't mean it's a tragedy. We still have a lot that we can add to the world. So um, I know that there's a lot of people with disabilities out there. So how do we what, what, what kind of message can we give out to, particularly for sponsors, right, for brand ambassadors, people that are out there in the market? What, what, what can we say to them to, to say, hey, guys, we need to start paying attention and we start focusing on people with disabilities? What do you say to that? Well, I, I say that the brands have to take the time to understand the numbers. And sometimes demographics and numbers can be confusing, but according to our CDC, just uh, this year, they um, put out a report saying that one in four Americans identify as having a disability. And as we age, and I'm today is my birthday as my Oh, so, happy uh, birthday. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. This is a wonderful birthday present. So, um, 
but I'm, I'm one of those baby boomers and there's, you know, uh, 72 million baby boomers. And as we are aging and the youngest of us, and I'm not the youngest, the youngest of us are 54. So in 2019, the youngest baby boomers are going to be 55. So we're all going to be over 55 and we, uh, we acquire disabilities. So it's hard for a brand to ignore an audience this large. And so it's very important for brands to include us as customers and include us and retain us as uh, your employees. And to even if you don't really know the full numbers, you cannot leave out the community of people with disabilities in the aging marketplace and expect that your, your competitors are going to leave us out because they're not going to. Right. So some of the brands that you are familiar with that are stepping up the game. Tell us about who, who they are and, and what have they done to change uh, the culture, basically, on disability. Well, there, there's some wonderful brands. Uh, Tommy Hilfiger is a brand that I love. That Which I'm familiar created, with, too, yes. <laughs> yeah, great, right. great brand. Love the CEO, Gary Scheinbaum. And they, uh, they created an entire line of adaptive clothing because a lot of people with uh, disabilities um, – they, they, especially certain types of disabilities, uh, physical disabilities, uh, they have a need, it, somebody that's in a wheelchair, for example, um, when you're sitting, your clothes are going to be different than when you're standing. People with autism don't always like taking and pulling something off the top of their head and back on. They have magnetic buttons. They've just done some really amazing creative things with their clothing lines. And you have other brands like Zappos and um, Nike is doing things. There's some really amazing brands, AT&T and Verizon, banks like Barclays and Bank of America and Wells Fargo. Right. Uh, there's Luckily, there's so many brands that are starting to understand the value of including people with disabilities. Microsoft certainly deserves a shout out, and so does Google and Amazon, for example. So there's a lot of the brands that are figuring out including us is good for their business. Hmm. Uh, one last question. I know that disabilities are, are becoming more prevalent. Do you think that's you think the brands are paying attention to that as well? And do you think that maybe um, we're going to see more inclusion or, or more? I, I guess I'm trying to say more of a, a, a normality, basically. Tell me a little bit more about that quickly. Well, I think that what you're going to see happening is more people are understanding that they are multidimensional human beings and that you know, we all have abilities and disabilities. So it's becoming more socially acceptable to identify that you have a disability. You have people like Sir Richard Branson, who was born with dyslexia, and he says it's one of his greatest superpowers. So as more people come out and talk about their ADHD, their mental health struggles, their, you know, you know, a wheelchair, or they're using a walker, or they're just these fragile human beings. The brands have to pay attention to mm. us. Well, that's all the time that we have, Deborah. Thank you so much for being with us. All the best to you, okay? Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. Okay, guys, thanks again to all of my guests here for being here today. And thanks to all of you at home for watching. Make sure you tune in next time for another wonderful show. Also, join me on social media at Aroldo Maglara so our conversations can continue and we can know what topics and guests you would like to see here on Unplugged with Aroldo. See you next time. The preceding was sponsored by Fitness Training by Aroldo Incorporated. Promotional consideration is paid for by